You, you, it's more of a mind shift than a action shift. You know what I mean? And so I was preparing for doomsday in my mind and I was working even harder. This has been the year that I've worked probably harder than ever. This is what I believe. I'm sharing that with you for nothing. Just get out there and succeed. But one question for you with a lot of a lot of people are struggling with a lot of stress right now. Yeah. You know, at least at the time of recording this, what is it? Middle of July here, 2020. So a lot of a lot of places like my market are starting to re-shut down to the rising cases of, of COVID-19 and yeah. um and, and then man, a lot of uncertainty out there. What what do you what do you personally do? And also what did you what did you do if you experienced kind of a freak out moment? like a lot of us did when this first happened. But what do you do to kind of manage that stress? Because it is so important, man. It's so important to be able to see clearly during times of chaos, to be able to capitalize on the opportunities at hand. Yeah, for sure. Man, I think the biggest thing is it's it's like anything else in life. Um, you know, let's just take, you know, cold calling, for example, or, you know, even like, even something as simple as just showing property for the first time can be scary. You know, um, these little things that scare you, um, you know, that you do over and over again, you kind of become numb to those things and, you, and then you, you, it just becomes a way of life at that point. It's the same thing with these market swings, you know, and these scary times in the economy, these scary times in the world. When you've been through a couple of these cycles, you know, and you, you kind of see it coming, um, you know, you realize what's happening. It's like, okay, I've seen this before, I've been in this position, nothing to worry about. Um, it's the same thing. You kind of become numb to the fact that if there's going to be market cycles. There's going to be scary things that happen that are just unforeseen. Nobody saw this coming. And you just have to get into this state of mind where you have to say to yourself, okay, listen, self, you know, closings are going to continue to happen every single day through these moments. Okay. You go back to 2008, 2000, you know, all the big crashes. You know, you look through the county records or MLS and you'll see closings continue to happen. Even through this most recent shutdown of the economy, you know, we had the, the uh, NAR saw the worst drop since they started uh, reporting uh, the, the pending sales and the closed sales. The worst drop since they've started reporting was April, okay? The worst that they've had, even through 2008, the real estate crash, the worst month, the worst drop month over month they've ever seen. There were still closings happening every single day by the truckloads, you know what I'm saying? And then May was the largest increase that they ever seen. You know, so it bounced right back. What if it didn't bounce right back? And that's what I was preparing for. You know, like you say, what did I do during the little freak out? Yeah, yeah, when it shut down completely, I kind of got tipped off because I was watching CNBC and it was probably late January or mid January. And they said Apple was going to suffer. Their, their revenue was going to suffer because of the coronavirus in China. Like they were going to have a little bit of a, a hiccup in their revenues. And that was the first tip to me. I said, okay, this something's, this is, this is big. Apple saying the revenues are going to be down. Something big is happening. And so I started to really pay attention. Um, and then later on, I said, okay, and, and, and you started to see a few cases in America. And I was like, all right, this is something that could be big and really disrupt the, the market because we haven't had a market downturn in so long. So you got to think something's going to knock us off the top. And so when it, you know, when it finally did click and everybody got into freak out mode and everything went to pretty much zero for a second. Um, yeah, I, I did. I, I, I took a step back and I said, okay, where are the holes at in my business, right? Because here's the thing, in my mind, I was thinking doomsday. I was thinking that this is gonna be, this is the beginning of the end. Like we're fixing to go into a deep, you know, <laughs> a deep recession, you know, depression situation um, in my mind. And so I wanted to start preparing for that immediately. So, you know, to prepare for something like that, it's like, you have, first you have to step back and, and just stay calm. You know, and realize, okay, even even as worse as it may get, the only thing that'll happen in terms of real estate agents in a real estate market is the greatest thing ever is that prices just adjust to the point where people continue to buy. What does that tell you? People are going to be continuing to buy. Transactions will continue. Um, so first, you have to realize that, and that that should take a lot of stress off of you. Like, okay. Closings are gonna to continue to happen. Now, how do I prepare? How do I put myself in the best position possible, you know, moving forward? And you really, 
shouldn't be doing anything different than what you're doing right this second. You know, you just have to, it's, it's a mind shift. It's like not an action shift. It's not changing up what you're doing day to day necessarily. It's just understanding what's coming and starting to prepare for it mentally in your mind and being able to handle the downturn of a market if it happens. The good thing is the market surged. <laughs> I mean, it, it came back with the vengeance. Who knows what's going to happen from here? You know, there's a lot of uncertainties out there for, uh, you know, later this year and even 2021, who knows? But the good thing is we kind of had us a little, what I like to think of, of this last little blip is kind of a warm up session. If the market does really crash, we had us a little, a warning, you know, a little warm up session where, listen guys, if, if the market crashes now, you know, pretty hard and, and for a long time, kind of like back in 2008, um, you know, <laughs> you can't say that you didn't see this one coming, you know, like th this is so telegraphed if it does happen, you know, that everyone should be in position uh, to continue pushing through this. When things go bad, you just go harder. You know, you, 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 you lean into it as hard as you can because the market will, will shift on its head. You know, like when the mark, when something scary happens in the market, everybody puts the brakes on. You know, all the buyers that were looking to buy or maybe even under contract, they put their brakes on and they either walk away and say, we're gonna hold off or they back out of the deal. And that, that happened to a lot of people, you know, when the economy shut down. And as a new agent, you're working with all these buyers and all of a sudden everybody puts the brakes on. You think, oh my God, I'm in trouble. But what you don't realize is that when something shocks the market, such as a pandemic or the stock market crash or the tech boom, those are all very temporary situations. Whereas if you look at all those scenarios, everybody puts their brakes on for just a second because they want to they see what, you know, what's going to happen out of this. And then as soon as the dust clears, which is normally a month or two or three, right? Then we get into this new normal where business just picks right back up where it left off, you know, regardless of prices drop or, or transactions drop or wherever we are, whatever the new market is, that'll be the new norm. So yeah, man, like you, you, it's more of a mind shift than a action shift, you know what I mean? And so I was preparing for doomsday in my mind and I was working even harder. This has been the year that I've worked probably harder than ever because, you know, I came into it, I switched companies, then pandemic, then I worked even harder to put myself in the best position possible. Then the market surged out of nowhere and I sold, you know, $20 million worth of stuff in May. And I was just, you know, you know, cutting cartwheels and backflips everywhere. So, uh, <laughs> I mean, it's been a, it's been a, it's been a hard working year, but I'm, I'm happy with where I am and I'm just gonna keep pushing through it.